Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Powerbomb Project. I am one of your co-hosts, Daniel, joined by my yep. other co-host. Your boy, Chris Buck. Check out my SoundCloud, bruh. Yeah, I have nothing to comment on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously this dude got no SoundCloud. No, so, but we do so, have something of a banger for you today. And what are we going to do today, Daniel? We're going to be discussing our top 10 underrated acts in AEW. And when I say acts, this could be either a trio, a tag team, or a singles competitor, all in general. And obviously everybody on this list uh, is utilized. Uh, we're not saying they aren't utilized, but we genuinely feel like all of these acts could be utilized more than they are. Wouldn't you agree? I can completely agree. And boy, do I have some opinions on some of these boys, but we'll start off with the number one guy on this listing. And that is so, Ethan Page. Yeah, so once again, everybody, this isn't in any particular order. I would like to mention that. Uh, but the but yeah, our first act uh, to talk about out of these 10 is indeed Ethan Page, all ego. So funny enough, his tag team partner is the one holding the TNT championship right now. But I feel like Ethan Page has been the one to impress me more out of the two. And there's a good reason for it, dude. Every time he goes on stage and does his performance, it's such a banger. And I'm just wondering, why do we give it to Scorpion Sky when Ethan Page is more deserving of the title? I mean, Jesus, every time when Ethan Page performs, it's always so much fun to watch, no matter who it's against. It could be against Fuego, for all I care, man. No, he's a Fuego, though. I love Fuego. Oof. Yeah. But, uh, what the fuck? Yeah, so with Ethan Page, I was going to say is that he's more charismatic. He, in my opinion, is a more entertained in-ring performer. And you just want to see this dude get punched right in the face. Just kind of like MJF. And I feel like they should really take advantage and build like a cool mid-card or upper mid-card top heel right here with uh, Ethan Page. That's just my personal opinion. I feel like he is definitely worthy of being a TNT champion in the future. And there hasn't really been anything he's been involved with outside of maybe some of the American top team bullshit he's been associated with that has bothered me. I mean, he did I've that little that thing with Darby Allen awesome. for like a yeah, tiny that was, bit. Yeah, the, the biggest thing he's done in the company so far is the Darby Allen feud. And it was, a, it was an amazing feud. I have nothing else to say. And that was the feud that kind of actually made me realize how good Ethan Page actually was. So, yeah. Um... I'm, that's enough for Ethan Page from me. Any last words for that? No, I completely agree with all your statements. Like I said, Ethan Page should do his own separate thing. But unfortunately, he's part of this American tag team thing for a hot minute until we figure oh, out what to do with him. I actually forgot. There there are quite a few names in AEW that kind of give me Randy Orton vibes. Ethan Page is absolutely one of those people. Like okay. a younger, cockier Randy Orton, you know? Exactly, and honestly, besides the TNT champ, he could probably do the world championship too if they push him hard it, enough. He has the potential to do it. Right, yeah, yeah. And uh, you can tell, though, there's like a lot of uh, interesting influences in general. He mentioned very recently uh, Razor Ramon. Uh, whenever he died, that was his dad's favorite wrestler, and funny enough, uh, you could kind of see it in Ethan Page, how he really likes to embody being the bad guy in AEW. You, you could uh, see that Scott Hall probably meant a lot to him as well when it comes to that wrestling influence. Uh, so, yeah, I just think there really is a lot to offer with Ethan Page uh, in general. Exactly. And then on number two is your boy, Dante Martin. Yeah, so Dante Martin has had many impressive performances before. He is only 20 years old. That is absolutely insane. And... He is a part of the top flight tag team, but when his partner or an slash brother Darius got injured, Dante kind of had to prove himself a little bit, and <laughs> he definitely did. But unfortunately, um, they're giving him the ricochet treatment, dude. <laughs> You're on AEW. I will say this though: for only 20 years old, the fact that the dude already has an AEW championship match under his belt is pretty freaking cool. But so. I, I feel like he's underrated because, you know, initially when that match was announced, it didn't really make it a big deal. It was just on right, regular yeah, TV, and I was like, day. oh, okay. It was announced the day of, and of course, I was excited because it was like out of nowhere and shit, and it was like, ooh, okay, okay. 
But um, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like it, it kind of maybe underplayed Dante Martin uh, as a big deal. But like I said, I feel like he's definitely uh, proved quite a bit for his age. Could he be doing a little bit more? I will say this. <laughs> My main reason for putting him on this underrated list is really for only one reason alone. He hasn't really had that huge feud yet. And maybe you can argue the closest to that was when he almost joined Team Taz, but to me that doesn't really count. Like I was thinking, mm -hmm. could we have gotten a Leo Rush feud? Did that never really happen? Um, we could have put him in a feud with, I don't know, Miro at one point. That didn't happen. There was a lot of things they could have done with him, I felt like. It, at least in terms of establishing... Um, you know, development within his character and putting him in feuds that matter. But not only that, even since his beginning, still when he first started, I remember like he was like really bad at like talking on the mic, but he's improved quite a bit since he's first begun with AEW. And I just hope yeah. he gets that push soon enough. Probably not. All right. <laughs> we'll probably just do the FCW hey. championship belt at this point, man. Hey, honestly, man, Ricky Starks has been looking pretty strong with that belt. I'm surprised they actually had him go over Swerve on Rampage the other week. Um, so, yeah, whoever beats uh, Starks will actually probably be looking pretty good with that belt. So, yeah, num uh, the third act on this list is none other than the Dark Order. And you're probably thinking, why the fuck is the Dark Order on this list? I'm not talking about the Dark Order as a state. I'm talking about the... You look at John Silver. You look at Alex Reynolds. You look at Evil Uno. You look at Ten. Exactly, You look dude. at... Like, all of these... Freaking talented and really good. And of course, the Dark Order is fantastic. It was Brody Lee's thing. But... This group no longer is really representing what Brody Lee. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I think it is time we can break them up. We'll bring it back. Don't worry. We could do a temporary alliance of like those three guys. So it's fine. Hey, I mean, nothing wrong with that. But yeah, I feel like John Silver is kind of being held back by, you know, being in this group. Same with a few other people. But, yeah, man, uh, that's all I really have to leave it at for Dark Order. You, um, forgot, um, you forgot Evil Uno. I, I, I said Evil Uno. Too bad he's a loser. Oof. <laughs> Damn. All right. Just How are you going to phrase I'll just get it. I'm just getting. I'm oh. just getting. I, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the fourth spot on this list is going to Santana and Ortiz, also known as Proud and Powerful. Exactly. So, any uh, any thoughts, Chris? I'm gonna I, let you go on. First. I really, I'm so excited that they're finally disbanded from Chris Jericho because they finally can be themselves for once, and they're finally getting the push that they deserve and have been coming in. For well, years. we don't know that yet. We don't know that yet because they're still. FTR, Young Bucks, Jurassic Express, and Red Dragon, four teams still in the spotlight before. Dude, no one's talking about Red Dragon, Pisa. dude. That's all that's all Adam Cole. When I think of Red Dragon, I think of Red Adam Cole. Fuck Red <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> Honestly, Santana and Ortiz should be the Eddie Kingston of the tag team division. Not a face, not a heel. Just just real. But yeah, man, I think Santana and Ortiz, especially Santana, are so fucking good, and they are worth a lot of stock, and I think AEW should definitely invest in them as uh, tag team champions, hopefully before the end of this year. I definitely feel like they could have won the belts even as far back as, like, 2020, but... But Chris yeah. Jericho said, nah, this is my team. This is about me and my pay-per-views. Yeah, I definitely feel like the inner circle held Santana and Ortiz back. Um, as for Sammy Guevara, uh, obviously he separated from the inner circle um, and gone into his own thing. And we'll talk about Sammy Guevara more later. Um, not in this video, but 
in the Pal Driver podcast where we are going to review this week of AEW Dynamite and a bunch of other topics as well. So be sure to check out out check that out. And you, get a cheek, and you can check out the previous episode where we shit on his terrible promo for last week. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> but yeah, so Sammy's Sammy's uh, kind of slowly losing a fan out of me. But as for Santana and Ortiz, I don't think that would be the same case. So, uh, number five. Okay, this act should be honestly in the title picture instead of the Red Dragon trio, and I'm sorry if that offends anybody. Um, but yeah, House of Black are better than the Undisputed Elite, 100 fucking percent, and, and no it, one can tell me otherwise. Uh, people on Twitter can tell you otherwise, dude, because your fucking stands for like, anything that's anything in your books. Anything that the Young Bucks or Adam Cole do, right? Like, no. House of Black are so incredible, and, pe- and AEW need to put their all elite buttholes to the side, and push actual talented House of Black. Well, I mean, they are. I mean, kind of. I mean, unfortunately, they're going but, against like, right. jokes I, I, right I, now. No disrespect, no disrespect to Red Dragons or the Young Bucks, right? But they're always going to be in the spotlight. And to tell you the truth, half the time, I don't think they deserve it. No. House of Black. No. <laughs> you got this a super kick? I'm dissing super kick parte. <laughs> but no man, House of Black are so incredible. They bring out the best out of their opponents. And all three of them are just really unique and dope in general. Uh Buddy Matthews, Brody King, and Malachi Black. All three of them individually are world champion acts and they're just kind of floating around in the mid card. But honestly, I'm just hoping that the House of Black gets their push eventually. I mean, even the beat the the Dino Express Boys or Jungle Yeah, that'd Express. be dope. I'm excited yep. for it, and I'll be perfectly fine with that because they deserve it. After that Cody Rhodes fucking bullshit of what happened, <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that, though, because this is appreciation of House of Black. Yeah, man. Uh, number, act number six. He used to be in WWE, Ring of Honor, many different promotions. He used to be no- known as Evan Bourne, but nowadays he goes by Matt Sydal. So he's been around wrestling probably almost as much as Punk, Brian, Joe, and all those guys, but he never really gets talked about like that, does he? No. He's always pushed to the <laughs> side. And to be fair, he doesn't have as much of a legacy as as those guys do. And I don't think he can, you know, be argued in the all-time status that all three of those guys have. So, but I will say this. Matt Seidel is an incredibly talented wrestler. No one can deny it. So, yeah, I think he would be really good, honestly, uh, in more of a TNT title picture position. And when, when, they're, they're, you're probably hearing me say TNT title for everybody. No, I'm not. I'm thinking of really saying it like this, right? I feel like the TNT title should be a title 10, 20 guys are constantly chasing, you know? And the, that could genuinely be one of those acts, Matt Seidel. I mean, he did and, have that good run with Kenny Omega for the championship belt, but he did lose, but it was still a banger no matter what. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I completely forgot that match even happened. <laughs> See? Whatever you do, underrated as fuck. <laughs> I didn't forget. That match was awesome. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I remembered it the minute you mentioned it, but it literally took me like five to ten seconds in my head to be like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, dude, that happened. I mean, he lost, obviously, but yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Big. Man, that's the biggest push he's gonna get. <laughs> yep, you're, you're right. You're right. So, number seven. Oh, this is literally if, if, this, if this was in category order, this would be my number one spot. Fuego del Sol. He literally should be AEW champion. Nah. Oh, actually, no. Nah. nah, not that nah. far. But but TNT champion absolutely. freaking lootly. Just remember, kids, if Scorpio Sky could do it, Fuego can do whatever he yeah! wants. Yeah, Fuego. 
But you know who's more underrated yeah. than Fuego? Fuego who? too, because he fucking died. Well, yeah. He is literally under. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Okay. Well. I'm not going to lie to you, dude. At first, when you introduced me, I fucking hated this guy. I thought it was the dumbest shit. But then as soon as I was watching more of his matches and more of what kind of character he is, I grew to like the guy. And I the fact that he's one of the best promo cutters in the entire company, and nobody knows it yet. And not to ma- mention, too, his match with House of Black was fucking insane. Like, his moves, yeah. like, he was kicking their asses for, like, a good five seconds until he got countered by Buddy. Right. But here's the thing. I wouldn't have had as much of an issue with that happening if Fuego wasn't established as, like, a jobber before all this. You're telling me, like, a masked jobber from Alabama is beating the entire House of Black on his own? I was like, get the fuck out of here. It was still a great moment, though. I loved it. Dude, Fuego's coming. But at the same time, it was like, yeah, this better be the start of a Fuego development. I'm no longer Fuego. I'm so Fuego. <laughs> So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Any last words on Fuego? No, nah, that was pretty much it. All right. Number eight, private party. They got the gin and jewels. Come on, man. This is an act that should be bigger than they are. Delete. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that's how they're going to get. Oh, wait, no. Not anymore. Oof. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm glad that they broke up from Matt Hardy. That needed to happen. But I don't like that. Here's the thing. The pri- private party just need to be private party. That's all to it. Nah, they're busy with fucking on Friday, but that, that's fine. He's doing his thing that's with Darby Allen. That's what I mean, though. Separ- separate from, like, any of the solo acts and just be private party. Gin and Juice, bro. The Snoop Dogg endorsed the man. Snoop Dogg. That's exactly my point. Snoop Dogg endorsed him. That's enough. Like, dude, come on. Snoop Dogg's not a sellout. Big. He doesn't sell out for money ever. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Is Snoop. Bro, he is an AEW wrestler, dude. He should be on this list, too. All right. Yeah. Number nine, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, the real number nine is actually. Our sexist ass actually only put one woman on this entire list. I just realized that. Dude, it's not sexist, dude. She's literally the best one that's happening that's outside of Jade, Thunder Rosa. Oh, and then uh, Ty Conte. And now the new uh, edition we'll be talking about on the second episode of Pile Driver Podcast. But, yeah, for Layla Hirsch, uh, she absolutely is, in my opinion, outside of Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb, maybe, the greatest wrestler in AEW for that woman's division. But she is not getting treated like it. I mean, she has a little beef with her friend. I mean, that's pretty Chris much it. Chris <laughs> Dude, the alien. Right, like, yeah, it's, it doesn't mean anything, really. I mean, I guess if it builds her up more, then sure, but no. Nah. Uh, I definitely think Layla Hirsch, uh, even as when she was a face, wasn't really utilized well. And I didn't even think they needed to turn her heel before having to actually use her. I That's just, okay. Yeah. But like I said, though, late better than never, I guess. I just hope to see it happen. And now the final act on this list is a controversial one. It's a very 50-50 one. And it's probably the least confident I am in all 10 of these spots. It is Pack. And... But the reason why we did include him on this list is because he is one of the best wrestlers in the whole world. And any time he goes out and wrestles, it is insane. He is able to add intensity into any feud he is in. There really isn't a single criticism I could say about Pac except the major one. And what's that? that he hurts his opponents. And because of him hurting his opponents, he isn't the AEW champion. He isn't on top of the world like he could be. Bro, you know what he's I'm telling had, you the wrestlers, man? He's had many wrestlers, one of which being Miro, go on record and say how Pac has tore his bicep, I believe, when they were wrestling a match. And since then, Miro has refused to work with him. He's c- called him unsafe. Many have called Pac, uh, in general, unsafe. 
They just can't handle Death Triangle, bro. They're just a bunch of wussies. Oh. Just kidding. Um, just kidding, though. But he is yeah. underrated. But if if he's going to be putting other people in danger because of his like own wrestling moves, I can understand why they feel this way. But he's very underrated. But if you can fix that little issue, you can make it big. Exactly. He needs, to, he needs to stop trying to be so aggressive in the ring. It's just unnecessary. But, yeah, that's that's our that's our list, everyone. Um, well, thank you all for watching. And uh, it's, please subscribe, like the video. Do all that you can to support us because that is genuinely going to be appreciated. So, I've been Daniel. And I've been Chris. And uh, sponsor us AEW. We're good. <laughs> We're yeah, good. No, not, no, not, 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 not yet. Not yet. Five subscribers is gold. <laughs> <laughs> Take oh, care. Yeah. This, is the, this is the race to 1K subs. And if we get 1K subs, then I'll get, I'll get hit with a taser. I don't know. All right. Later, y'all. Okay, bye.